Do you know what open source tool now has a contribution payment program? Have you seen the first open AI test generation LLM? And what are some of the hottest trends in Kubernetes? Find out in this episode of the Test Skill News Show for the week of May 26. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to our Test Guild LinkedIn News Show newsletter that I'll have a link for down below and never miss another episode. So exciting news in Appium. Appium has just introduced a sponsorship program for its contributors and recognized partner companies. Through Open Collective, individuals and organizations can donate various tiers, receiving benefits like recognition, Appium's documentation, and websites, and the funds will be distributed monthly to project maintainers, contributors, and upstream projects, fostering community growth. So for testers, you're going to benefit from enhanced support and resources, improving project stability, and recognition for your contributions. And as you probably know, financial incentives can motivate active participation and innovation within the Appium community. So really great sign from Appium. If you do anything with Appium, check that out in the comments down below. So want to know more about an open source AI test gen LLM? Let's check it out. So last week, Codium announced that it has developed and released the first open source implementation of Meta's Test Gen LLM, a tool aimed at enhancing automated unit test coverage. And this follows the February publication by Meta researchers of a paper on automating unit tests, improving large language models that we covered back in February. And the new tool integrates with Codium AI's open source project cover agent, promising to improve test coverage with assured improvement over existing code bases. So this is really cool because now you can use TestGen LLM to generate tests that compile, run correctly, and help you increase code coverage. It also can help you with tool validation tests that updates the test suite until the code meets coverage criteria or reaches maximum iterations. It also helps you with challenges like languages like Python, which require precise indentation. And Codium AI's open source implementation of Meta's TestGen LLM offers a really great tool for testers to check out to maybe enhance or maybe augment their test case generation and coverage, obviously not to replace it, but also help foster a community collaboration for ongoing advancements on what works and what does it to help you test better. Definitely check this out as well. Let me know your thoughts. And also another company has availed more AI technology, and this one is with SmartBear. So SmartBear has unveiled Halo AI, which is a new AI-driven technology designed to help software developers and testers. This article goes over how Halo AI aims to automate repetitive and complex tasks, significantly boosting productivity and innovation within development teams. And some key points in this article is, in beta testing, Halo AI reduced test times by 98%, an automated half of QA tests, saving 20 hours per regression cycle. It also goes over how Halo AI integrates with Gen AI technology to address talent shortages and enhance team capabilities. SmartBear emphasizes improved customer experiences by enabling teams to work faster and more efficiently. And the technology is part of SmartBear's broad AI strategy, which includes previous innovations in automated regression tests and AI-powered test management. And you can find out more about this in the links down below. So can you use APIs as an alternative to end-to-end -end tests? Maybe so. Let's check out this next article. And Ivan, let me know they just released this article. If you don't know, Ivan's a principal QA engineer and test automation coach. And in this article, he highlights a new approach to testing APIs offering an alternative to the traditional end-to-end -end test. And instead of relying solely on external tests that mimic real-world API consumptions, developers can now implement internal tests using Node.js, Express.js, and the SuperTest library. And he goes into detail how this approach grants greater control over the testing environments by allowing the API to be tested from within its code base. And this enables the use of mocking for various components, enhancing the flexibility and accuracy of tests. And while traditional end-to-end -end tests remain crucial for validating API functionality in real environments, combining them with internal tests like this can provide a more comprehensive testing strategy. Really cool technique that you should definitely check out if you're doing anything with API testing. So you wanna know about trends and predictions for 2024 when it comes to Kubernetes? If so, here's an article you definitely should read as well. 
And this is how, in 2024, Kubernetes management is evolving with new trends and predictions that aims to streamline, secure, and optimize container orchestration. So some trends you need to know is, number one, is GitOps adoption. GitOps uses Git for declarative infrastructure and applications, enhancing version control and automation. Number two is Kubernetes native tools, specialized tools for Kubernetes are becoming more popular. Policy as code, defining security policies as code that ensures consistent enforcement and reduces human error. Number four is automated vulnerability scanning. Five is service mesh usage. Six is AI and machine learning integrations to help you with predictive management, resource allocation, and security anomaly detection. Number seven, they go over is edge computing. And number eight is resource optimization and sustainability. And these developments really ensure that testers can maintain high standards of security, efficiency, and flexibility in managing and testing Kubernetes environments that I know a lot of you are dealing with. So definitely check out this article and see if it helps you. So I was really excited when I saw this next article. It's all about a Java-based load testing tool you all should be using, but I think you may not have been using it for this exact reason. Now you have no excuse. So Gatling, which is a popular open source load testing tool, has launched a new JavaScript and TypeScript SDK, doubling its accessibility for developers. This new SDK allows developers to write load tests in JavaScript and compile them and run on Java virtual machines, leveraging Gatling's powerful multi-threading capabilities. And this update, I think, really broadens Gatling's user base by enabling JavaScript developers to utilize familiar syntax and tools from the NPM registry while harnessing the performance features of Gatling. And the JavaScript SDK integrates seamlessly with Gatling's robust code base and supports the Gatling Recorder, an application that captures browser-based user actions and converts them into load testing scripts. And this tool simplifies the process for new users and enhances the script capabilities for more complex scenarios. So if you're using JavaScript and you haven't checked out Gatling yet, this is your chance to do so. And you can find a link for this in the links down below. All right, I came across this new announcement scrolling through my LinkedIn feed where I saw this by Amjad, who talked about how Houndog has officially launched emerging from stealth mode, which announced its first series C round of funding. So what is Houndog AI? Well, this new platform aims to help data security by offering proactive measures to prevent personal identification information. And as you know, traditional reactive approaches often fail to keep up with the rapid code-based changes leading to costly data breaches and compliance issues. With Houndog AI, they created it to address this by using advanced AI to detect sensitive data flows and generate records of processing activities for GDPR compliance. So it helps you with a bunch of things. So the first one is the AI-powered scanner identifies PII leaks before they reach production, reducing the risk of data breaches. It also has comprehensive data mapping, which allows the platform to provide detailed data flow reports, which are essential, as you know, for GDPR. And it also has seamless integrations within your CI, CD pipelines. So I'm always curious about companies that acquire other companies because it gives me a signal of where we're going in certain industries. And this next article goes over how BugCrowd acquired Informer to boost attack service management. So BugCrowd is one of the leading crowd security platforms, and it has acquired Informer, which is an external attack surface management vendor to enhance its visibility and security capabilities for customers. This article goes over how this acquisition aims to integrate Informer's advanced technology into BugCrowd's platform, providing better insights into digital assets and improving the scope of penetration testing and bug bounty programs. And Informer's technology, which goes beyond simple DNS scans, will help understand and secure their attack service more effectively, particularly benefiting sectors like healthcare that rely heavily on third-party assets. All right, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to the links in that comment down below. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.